Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. So now we proceed to second method in iterative method which is called Seidel method. For Seidel method, you will have here the same step as Jacobi method. The first step, you need to rearrange the equation such that the system is diagonally dominant. Means that we have to do as same in Jacobi method. And in step number two, we need to write the equation in an explicit form. The difference is here, whereas here you will have x1, x2, x3 as subject. That is, you can see you have here for the k plus 1 iteration here, okay, and then equal to all this. But uh, for the first x1, you will have the same formula as Jacobi method. However, for x2 and x3, now the formula is different. The formula for x2, you will have here x2 k plus 1 equal to b2 minus e21 x1 if in Jacobi method, this one is k. However, here it becomes k plus 1 because when you do iteration, you will start to compute this one, right? Means that you will already have this value. Once you have this value, you will update here. Uh, means that at this x2, we will, we will use the updated x1, not the previous value. And then, minus a to 3x3 here become k because k is not yet computed once you go to this x2, k plus 1. So, we still do, uh, need to use uh, the, uh, the value of x3 from previous iteration. And then class, when we go to x3, k plus 1 here, you can see for this x1 and x2, it's become here k plus 1 and also k plus 1. Because in that same iteration, you will compute first x1, you will then you compute x2, means that you already have the value of x1 and x2 at that iteration. Then you can substitute the updated value instead of previous value. This is the difference between Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel method. And then at step number three, the calculation process start by assuming initial values uh, for the unknown for the first iteration. Means that you will do your iteration uh, based on the initial value given in the equation. If the initial value is not given in the equation, means that we will use here zero as our initial value of all x. So class, we did the same, uh, we use the same example too. Now, class, we go to this example too. We, we have the same question as Jacobi method, but in this question, we need to use gauss seidel method to obtain the solution for the following system. And you need to use four decimal places in your competition, and we let here xi, which is for initial value of all x are 0, 0, 0. And then, we, need, we still need to compute up two iterations, and we also need to approximate uh, percent relative error for each iteration and compare the solution with the result obtained in example 1. Based on previous example, we can see that for our step number 1, we need to rearrange the equation to make its system diagonally dominant. In this case class, you can see, uh, actually it is the same as uh, the, the example in Jacobi method. For row number 2 and row number 3 clearly, we can see that the main diagonal here it is less than the sum of two values at the same row. Also, the main diagonal at the third row is uh, less than the sum of two values at the same row. So, we have to switch row. Row number two become row number three and row number three become row number two. When we switch row, we will got the same what we got in example one. So, class, based on this, we will use this matrix to solve x1, x2 and x3. We need to write the equation in explicit form. So for this case, we have the same formula in example 1. But the difference here is, for this x1, for the second iteration, you will have here x1, which is now, it is no longer k, but this is k plus 1. And also for this x3, when we want to compute x3, we will have here x1 and x2 no longer here k, but all this become k plus 1. So this will be our formula in this Gauss-Seidel example. When we use this formula, Start for the first iteration here. For first iteration, our k equal to 0. And then we know from the question we have all here as our initial condition. That is, this one is x1 for the initial value. 
this one x2 for the initial value and the last one here is x3 for the initial value and now class we want to compute x1 at k plus 1 which is here 0 plus 1 you will have here 10 minus x2 at initial value x3 minus uh, uh, minus x3 at initial value which is divided by a so here x2 you got here 0 and x3 at initial value also 0 means that you will got 10 over 8 which is 1.25 same solution as in example of Jacobi method and then class for the second uh, value which is x2 at this first iteration you will have here remember the formula for this x2 okay we have in general x2 at k plus 1 equal to 4 minus x1 at k plus 1 this is for gauss seidel method minus 2 x3 at k which is divided by negative 7 so class here when k equal to 0 means that you will have x1 at first iteration equal to 4 minus uh, sorry x2 at first iteration equal to 4 minus x1 here k0 right so uh, 0 plus 1 at first iteration minus 2 x3 at initial divided by negative 7 so this one x3 at initial you got it from this initial condition which is 2 times 0 so we we'll got 0 but x1 at first iteration we will get the value from this calculation that is the value is 1.25 it is no longer zero that is you have to substitute here this 1.25 in this formula means that you will get different answer as in jacobi method when you solve using your calculator the answer here is negative 0 0.3929 instead of in jacobi we got negative 5.7 something so now class when we go to the third value here which is x3 at first iteration for this one the formula in jacob uh, sorry in gauss seidel method is given by x3 k plus 1 equal to negative 2 minus 2 x1 remember class here k plus 1 minus x2 k plus 1 okay all this divided by 9 so for this one you can see k equal to 0 right so we have x3 at first iteration equal to negative 2 minus 2 x1 here also will take the value at first iteration minus x2 also will take the value at first iteration divided by 9 so we will no longer use the value from initial value for the third values here means that you will have negative 2 minus 2 times 1.25 plus 0 0.3929 this is x1 at first iteration and this one is x2 at first iteration when we solve this one using our calculator we'll got the answer negative 0 0.4563 so now class we need to compute epsilon a. Epsilon a for this one, for uh, the first unknown, the first x1, it is actually equal as Jacobi method because we got the same value as Jacobi. That is 1.25, that is the value at the first iteration minus initial divided by the value at first iteration multiplied by 100%, so we got here 100% error and then when we go here to the uh, second iteration uh, sorry for the second value also we'll got here 100 percent error but now the value change which is here we have uh, this one current value for the second unknown minus initial value remember class the previous solution it comes from initial value for the first iteration divided by current solution so when you solve this one you also will got 100% error and also same happen for the x3 here which is the current value for x3 that is negative 0 0.567 0 0.4563 minus initial value divided by this current value multiplied by 100% so we will got 100% error make sure error in positive number because we put here absolute value so class next we go to the second iteration in second iteration remember based on previous iteration we have this one as our x1 at first iteration this value is x2 x2 at first iteration and this one is x3 at first iteration 
So now we have the same formula. But now our k will be different because now k equal to 1. So we want to compute all x at second iteration. Based on the formula for x1 at second iteration equal to 10 minus x2. Remember class, this one k, right? So k you substitute with 1 means that x2 at first iteration. And then x minus x3 also at first iteration. So that you substitute the value here. Okay, this is x1 at first iteration. x3 at first iteration. Substitute in this formula. Solve using your calculator, you'll got 1.3562 as the solution. And the next class, we go to the x2 at the second iteration. For this one, we know the formula now is different between Jacobi method, which is our formula 4 minus x1. Here is k plus 1, right? So when here is k plus 1, which is we have k is 1, so 1 plus 1, it becomes 2. So you have to substitute the value here with the value of the x1 at second iteration with this value. So it is no longer take the value from the pre previous solution. It take the updated value at that, so at that iteration. So now class, when we substitute here, the value of x1 at second iteration is equal to 1.3562 and then minus 2. Our x3 here still, we uh, take it from our previous solution. So this is the value you can substitute and you cut from your calculator negative 0 0.5081 for the x2 at second iteration. And now class, we go to the x3 at second iteration. We have this formula, but please bear in mind that all this actually is for k plus 1. This one also k plus 1. So your x1 and x2, you will take the value, uh, which is the updated value from this iteration. So x1 at second iteration is given by this value. And x2 at the second iteration is given by negative 0 0.5081. When we substitute in this formula, we will get the answer negative 0 0.4671. And then class based on this, all this will be our all xi at second iteration and this uh, all xi at first iteration. If you want to compute error, this, uh, this value will be current solution and this xi at first iteration will be previous solution. So how to compute error? You can see here. Uh, the current solution is that here x1 at second iteration minus x1 at first iteration divided by x1 at second iteration. We'll got here 7.83% error. And then we did the same way, but now we go to the x2, which is here x2 at second iteration. This one is x2 at first iteration divided by x2 at second iteration. You can see your error here is 22.67%. And then class, when we go to the last one, we can see here, this one is x3 at second iteration. And this one is x1 at first iteration. Uh, sorry, x3 at first iteration. Divided by x3 at second iteration times 100%, you got 2.31% error. So class here, if we compare with the Jacobi method, in Jacobi method, actually, for x1, we see the error is, okay, for Jacobi, the error here, epsilon a x1 equal to 7.35%, epsilon a x2 equal to 25.22%, and epsilon a x3 equal to 49.10%. So now we can see the error here is actually uh, for epsilon a for x1, it is uh, not quite uh, different. Okay, just uh, for this uh, this gauss seidel method, it is greater uh, 0. Point something. But you can see the difference is in x2 and x3 because now we use the updated value. 
in x1 we, we are not using the updated value we still use the previous value but for x2 and x3 we use the updated value so you can see how the error will be decreasing so now for example for x3 we can see from 49.10 percent based on jacobi method now the error is just 2.31 percent in gossidal method therefore we can conclude that after two iterations we have all these solution where is the epsilon a is given here so class huh? so this is the comparison between gauss seidel and jacobi method you can see the value for x1 x2 x3 for after two iteration for jacobi and this is the epsilon a and this one is for gauss seidel method and this is z solution okay and we can see that when we compare, actually, Gauss-Seidel method converge faster compared to Jacobi method. Why we can say that it converges faster can be measured by the error. As a conclusion class, the difference in Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel method only in the formula. You have to remember that Jacobi method used previous solution in all calculation, but for Gauss-Seidel method, once you got the updated value, it will use the updated value in the uh, computation of all unknown. So, class, it comes to the end of the uh, video for Gauss-Seidel method. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. See you. In